Homegrown American Muslim terrorist Omar Mateen killed around 50 people and injured dozens more at The Pulse, which bills itself as Orlando's hottest gay bar. Mateen shouted Allahu Akbar as he was shooting, and before the attack, he called 911 to declare his allegiance to ISIS. As with every terrorist attack carried out in the name of Allah, politicians and the media will take this opportunity to tell us what a wonderful religion Islam is, and Muslim organizations and apologists will be given endless airtime to convince viewers that the Quran is the solution to the world's ills, thus leading to the ironic spike in converts that seems to follow every Muslim terrorist attack. How encouraging it must be for terrorists to know that the more people they slaughter, the more converts they'll get in return, thanks to the well-meaning but utterly misguided thought puppeteers who get to decide what we hear following the worst mass shooting in U.S. history and the worst U.S. terrorist attack since 9-11. If you're watching this video, I doubt you're one of the easily manipulated reality deniers who are still convinced that these attacks have nothing to do with Islam. But you may be wondering how these terrorists are choosing their targets. Why attack a gay nightclub in Orlando? Let's look at some facts about Islam. First, the Muslim sources are filled with commands to violently subjugate non-Muslims, fight those who do not believe in Allah, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them. Fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness. In the Hadith, Sahih Muslim 129, Muhammad declares, I have been commanded to fight people until they bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So there are standing orders to violently subjugate non-Muslims because of their beliefs when the Muslim community is in a position to do so. Second, even though there are general calls to violently subjugate non-Muslims when the Muslim community is able to do it, there are more specific commands to target those who cause problems in Muslim lands. Surah 5 verse 33 of the Quran, for instance, lays down penalties for those who wage war against Allah. How do you wage war against Allah? By committing the vague crime of doing mischief in a Muslim land. Depending on the severity of the mischief, the penalty can be exile, crucifixion, death, or dismemberment. The most extreme form of doing mischief, however, is bringing a non-Muslim military into a Muslim land. Now, not according to us, but according to Islam, has the U.S. military done mischief in Muslim lands? Absolutely. So those soldiers are under a death penalty. But it doesn't end there, because according to Muhammad himself, the people who support soldiers, the people who pay the bills for the military, receive the same reward as the soldiers who actually fight. Who pays the bills for the U.S. military? The U.S. government, which receives its money from U.S. taxpayers. U.S. taxpayers are therefore under the same Islamic penalty as the U.S. soldiers who fight in Iraq or Afghanistan. Third, Muhammad's favorite method, the method that he claimed brought him victory, was terrorism. In Sahih al-Bukhari 2977, Muhammad proclaims, I have been made victorious with terror. Not tolerance, not kindness, not interfaith dialogue. Terror. Fourth, Muhammad ordered his followers to execute homosexuals for sodomy. In Sunan Abu Dawud 44-47, he says, If you find anyone doing as Lot's people did, kill the one who does it and the one to whom it is done. Lot's people are the men of Sodom who were homosexuals. Fifth, in Islam, Muslims have to obey their leader as long as the leader isn't calling for something that violates the commands of Allah and Muhammad. In Sahih al-Bukhari 7144, Muhammad maintains, a Muslim has to listen to and obey the order of his Muslim ruler, whether he likes it or not, as long as his orders involve not one in disobedience to Allah. But if an act of disobedience to Allah is imposed, one should not listen to it or obey it. So if your leader, the caliph, orders you to do something that doesn't involve disobedience to Allah, you have to obey. Recently, ISIS called for Ramadan terrorist attacks against Western targets. Based on the passages we've examined, do terrorist attacks against unbelievers, particularly unbelievers who fund the U.S. military through their taxes, violate the commands of Allah and Muhammad? Obviously not, since Islam explicitly calls for such attacks. So if you regard Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi as your leader, do you have to obey? Yes, you do, especially during Ramadan when you're trying to be extra devout. 
But why would Mateen target a gay nightclub when U.S. taxpayers in general have been sentenced to death? Well, terrorists in the West seem to target people who are under as many Islamic death penalties as possible. It's as if the terrorists ask themselves, why go after these guys who are only under one Islamic death penalty when I can go after those guys who are under three Islamic death penalties? Of course, Islam has so many death penalties for so many different crimes, it seems that the only way you can feel at all safe is to convert to Islam and obey Muhammad's teachings completely. And that's why Muhammad said that he was victorious through terror. Given the options, live in endless fear or become a Muslim, many will eventually convert. And Islam has been offering people these two options for nearly 14 centuries. But there's a third option. Confronting Islam with something that it can't hope to overcome. Islam's only weapons are manipulation, deception, and terror. If something is impervious to those weapons, Islam cannot succeed against it. What's impervious to Islam? Very simple. An informed population of free people. If you're thinking, but we already have that, you're currently part of the problem because what we have now is a misinformed population of gullible drones. An informed population of free people will demand truth from the media, and the media will have to adapt or they'll go out of business. An informed population of free people will elect leaders who make good decisions, not sniveling cowards who sacrifice their country on the altar of political correctness. An informed population of free people will not fall for taqiyya. An informed population of free people will never submit. An informed population of free people will openly criticize Muhammad, and Muhammad cannot stand up to criticism. Any real, lasting solution to the problem of Islamic terror must begin with building an informed population of free people. How do we do that? A good start would be clicking on this video, taking notes, and sharing what you learn with others until the basics become common knowledge. You may not agree with me yet that this is the way to defeat jihad, but I'm betting my life on it.